Hi, I'm Joe Carrero. Folks, it's us against them, and we're losing. And yet we keep voting for these people who don't represent our interests. We keep voting for the candidate who raises the most money, and 9 out of 10 of the winners are those who spent the most in their campaigns. And the capability to raise money is the number one reason political parties choose which candidate will represent their party in an election where we only have the two party choices to choose from. While we're deciding which senators and representatives we choose, where do you think the money comes from that causes us to pick the one that spends the most? Well, in 2009, 13,741 registered lobbyists spent $3.47 billion lobbying members of Congress and federal agencies, essentially paying Democrats and Republicans for the protection of their industry interests. If you ever wonder why the health care bill protects big business or why we don't have tort reform or why the government looked the other way while investment firms made a shambles of our economy, just look at who the lobbyists are giving money to. And us average Joes can figure out why. It's the political leadership of both parties and houses of Congress who determine whether bills pass or fail. They appoint the committee chairman. So to stop tort reform, lawyers gave, gave House Speaker Nancy Pelosi 62000 and House Majority Leader Steny Hoyer 121000 with with Majority Whip James Clyburn getting over 67000 And over the Democrat Senate, Majority Leader Harry Reid received $1.7 million dollars as Majority Whip Dick Durbin got two million, and De Democrat Conference Chair Patty Murray only received four hundred forty thousand. The lawyers covered themselves with the Republicans as well, with with House Minority Whip Eric Cantor getting eighty nine thousand, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell nine hundred sixteen thousand, Minority Whip John Kyle six hundred seventy seven thousand, and Republican Conference Chair Lamar Alexander three hundred ninety seven thousand dollars to protect big business interests on both sides of the healthcare debate, healthcare professionals contributed $141,000 to Speaker Pelosi, $117,000 to Lita Hoyer, and another $85,000 to Clyburn, along with $70,000 from, from pharmaceutical companies. And then the Senate, Harry Reid, got $480,000 and Patty Murray, $214,000. Now, to influence the Republicans' healthcare vote, it was insurance companies giving leader Boehner 92000 along with another 63000 from pharmaceutical companies, while Cantor got 132000 And in the Senate, Republican leader McConnell was getting $723,000 from health care professionals, while they gave Kyle 650000 Then, to keep the financial community safe, securities and investment firms gave, gave Pelosi $105,000, with 53000 going to Clyburn, as Senator Reid got $1.27 million, which also included gambling interests, and Durbin got over a million. The financial industry protected itself on the Republican side with $67,000 going to Boehner, $150,000 for Cantor, and $1.14 million donated to Senator McConnell, and another million to, to Alexander. And, and, and that's just the political leadership. Finance Committee Chairman Democrat Senator Max Baucus raised over $3.3 million in contributions from the health care and insurance industry in the past few years as, as he controlled health care legislation in the Senate. And Republican Congressman John Campbell amended the Consumer Financial Protection Agency Act that protected consumers, but also exempted car dealers, after he received $6 million in rent as their landlord. If you watch my video on government nepotism, you realize that these payments are, are just a tip of a tremendous iceberg. It doesn't matter which party they belong to or how much they protest about legislation to make it look like they're representing the folks back home. They make sure that they first take care of those industries that make sure they have enough money to win their next election. Now, how can we compete when big business has bought all that access? And let's not forget billions more are given by hired lobbyists who don't show up on industry associations or, or union lists. We can't compete for the time or money that lobbyists spend protecting their interests. It may sound crazy, but I think the only way for our government to get back to its roots of, of representing the people and survive is to do away with lobbyists. Isn't, isn't that why we elect those to represent us in Congress? 
to lobby for our interests? Ask your congressman to sponsor a bill that does just that and see how they stumble around trying to explain the value of lobbyists to the system. Gee, I wonder what lobbyists would contribute to Congress to protect themselves. Or let's see if we can elect a new Speaker of the House who will appoint committee chairmen on the basis of their qualifications, not how much money they have or their seniority or what party they belong to, and they're required that they not accept any contributions from lobbyists. Gee, what are the chances that would ever occur? About the same chance our country will recover if it, if it doesn't happen. You know, I believe the greatest hope and the biggest letdown that most of us had with Barack Obama's election had something to do with the economy and health care and everything else on a growing wish list of things that need to be changed in our country. But it was Obama's promise to rid Washington of the grip of lobbyists and then go back on his word when he got there and realized how powerful they really were. All those other things depended upon the capability of Congress to make the right decisions about health care and the economy and all these other big issues. The decisions that would be in the best interest of the people of our country. The decisions that would put our country on a path that made common sense, business sense, and moral sense, not dependent on political sense. With the current system, they couldn't make those right decisions. And with the current system, our democracy cannot survive. And stay alert, folks. We all know the worst is yet to come. And thanks for listening to an average Joe.